Hi everybody, Richard Trumpet here again, Artificial Lawyer TV. Uh, today we're doing another product walkthrough. This time the company is Vecflow and they're showing off their Oliver uh, multi-purpose uh, legal AI tool. To tell us more about it is Rutvig. Hey Rutvig. Hey, nice, nice to see you and thanks for having us on here. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Well, yeah. look, if you could just give a quick introduction to yourself, the company, and then get straight into the walkthrough, which is going to contain several features, I'll come back at the end. Thank you. I'm Ruthwick, one of the co-founders of the team. We've been building the Oliver product throughout Vexel for about a little bit more than a year and a half now. And we primarily work with law firms trying to really think about how can they use generative AI capabilities over internal documents, along with really thinking about how do you use Gen AI to actually streamline day-to-day -day workflows, right? So there are three main parts of our platform that I'll briefly dive into. The first is what we would call the assistant of our system, where it's a great general purpose large language model for example, summarizing documents, Q&A over them, extracting information, reading red lines and summarizing red lining changes. And the second part of our system is what we actually are super excited about, so what we call generative drafting, where you can sort of build first drafts of documents that are repetitive in nature by either using a base template, so internal form documents, and then providing a term sheet of changes, or even executed agreements, right? So excited to dive into that. And then the third thing that I will touch upon today is our tabular review section. So this this side of the platform is really helpful for due diligence work and review work when you're sort of comparing a ton of documents. So if I have about 80 service agreements and you're comparing them against a playbook, for example, we can sort of do that analysis essentially in an entirely streamlined fashion, right? So as I mentioned, our first start of the platform is actually connecting to internal information. So we have connectors built out with a lot of the large DMS providers. We also build out bespoke connectors, so we go where your data really is. And our entire platform can reside either in, in your internal VPC, we have a private tenant cloud that we deploy, and also we can deploy it within specific jurisdictions. So all data on the platform is confidential. Same goes for any information you used to a language model, right? So let's jump right into the assistant mode of the system. So here you can see that I have now pressed into assistant. We essentially have been taken to this, to this main page over here where you have your recent questions on the right-hand side. And then you also have a list of a big prompt box area. You can save prompts, you can load some prompts over here. And you can also select folders, right? So on the bottom, what you see is our collection of documents that we've built out. And let's now choose choose a collection of service agreements that I have, right? So this collection is just a bunch of service agreements. And maybe the first task that you want to do is you just want to figure out saying, can you summarize the combination clauses within these agreements? And you would choose query mode. And since I have selected these folders, our system will now read through all of these documents and then generate a response that actually summarizing all of these agreements, right? And the main idea here is you're starting out with an incredibly broad query, trying to understand what's within my data, you're sort of interrogating what are these documents about. And as you've done that first step and you'll see the response coming back with some citations, you have a good sense of what actually exists within these documents, you can then dive deeper by asking follow-up questions towards specific documents, right? So you're gonna do a large broad scale survey and then you can sort of double down on particular documents. So for example, these generated, just summarize some of the termination clauses. You can then also see really in-depth citations. We provide some follow-up questions that are really helpful for analysis. And at the same time, you would see you have these citations that actually bring you to the clauses. And let's say I'm, very interested in thinking about the Ability Inc. service agreement, right? So I would then look at my sources, which essentially shows me all the documents I've referenced. I could then select the Ability Inc. document itself and now ask a follow-up question that only focuses on that one document, right? So now I have chosen Ability Inc. I can say, can you summarize 
the key points in this agreement. And I would run this query over here. So now what I've done is I've gone from a broad scale perspective into a much narrower scope. And you can also see reasoning steps, right? So the way we've trained our system is to really use an agentic approach where you have multiple language models answering your queries. And we sort of explain our steps saying, this is the first step our system took and sort of gives the user satisfaction saying, how did our system generate to an answer, right? So as you can see, the previous question we asked, the summary has now been generated. It's now essentially doubled down in the document and just given information about that one platform, right? And you can use this for Q&A work, summarization, understanding documents, really as a general system that's entirely tailored towards your internal documents in an entirely secure fashion, right? And that's the first part of our system that I want to dive into. The second one is actually our newest feature called generative drafting. It's a little bit still in the works, but we're super excited to show it to you guys. So over here, what you would come into is use press new draft. And essentially the idea here is a lot of legal work is built on either form documents or internal templates. So what we will come, come up with is you can select a template that you like. So for example, I'm looking at some NDAs and I have an internal NDA template that is used as our base document or our form document, right? I would select that base template. I would press next. And then I would also choose a second document. So over here, what we call this is a term sheet. And a term sheet just includes a list of changes that you would want to make, right? So I can give two prompts for the general side. I can say, um, include all details and be specific. And I can say, use all the terms mentioned here. And essentially now what our system is doing, it's actually generating a plan for how can we make the edits that the user has requested in the term sheet into the base document itself, right? And this is incredibly helpful for large corporate documents. So you can think about this being used for SBAs, SHAs, credit agreements, just really NDAs, for example, where you have a form document and want to fill out new information into that system. And as we generate a plan, one of the key things that you see, it sort of gives you an overview saying, you know, you, the document requires significant modifications. It sort of tells you saying, I'm going to modify these particular sections. I'm going to change the counterparty and I'm going to add the addresses. And it also asks you some questions. So it says, what are some more feedback that you want to give to the system? So it sort of really goes into the human in the loop concept. And I would press next and then I would press edit my prompt where I can start answering some of these questions, right? So I could say, should the security breach notification requirement be added to existing incidents? So I could say, add it to existing incidents. And I can say, you know, you can respond to the section. Are there any details? I can also say no to that. But this really gives the user a lot more control over the output of the platform rather than being a sort of black box system where you're not sure what's going to come out of it. And then you can decide if you want to see track changes. So you can see a mocked up version of the document. So let's, let's do that for clarity. And let's create draft, right? So this draft will start processing. It takes a little bit of time to process. But once it's ready, you'd essentially get a mocked up version of your initial document, right? So while that's, while that's processing, I could run into the tabular review section of our platform and cover that and come back to this and another assistant mode as well. So the next thing I would quickly show you is what we call tabular review. This is incredibly helpful for large scale review work, due diligence, just sort of research over a large corpus of documents, right? And we've actually shared playbooks with, with all of our partnering law firms. And you can sort of use these pre-generated playbooks to actually start one of your reviews. So for example, I'm analyzing a bunch of service agreements, right? So let's select these service agreements. And essentially we've worked with our lawyers to actually build these playbooks out for you such that it gives you a quick starting point. And you can then go ahead and edit the column name. You can edit the question. You can choose the response type. So you can choose a short text, a long text, number, boolean, or just verbatim, which is just extracting the text itself. And you can update these questions, right? So once I've built this playbook, 
I'm happy with it, I would press next. And then let's now choose a document set. So we ran an example over these service agreements earlier. So I think this would be the best starting point. So let's see. So let's, I selected the document, service agreement analysis, view, and I would begin my, right? So as, as you can see, the playbook essentially consisted of 10 columns that we wanted to analyze the service agreements from. And these can be ones that are created internally. We have some ones built out for you that you can really use to get started quickly. And what you would actually come back with, let's run into one of these earlier, is you would come back to this Excel style grid that actually shows you saying, you know, for each of these documents. So on the left-hand side, you would see all the documents and each grid over here answers one of the questions you're interested in. And you can see that I have looked into payment terms, look at liability, party assurances. So you can really get a good idea of what exists in those documents and analyze in an entirely structured format. And you can use this for extracting key clauses, extracting information, but also doing the second level of analysis on top of that. And as you can see, you can easily add a new column as well. So I could choose to make this entirely iterative where I have 10 columns, I want to now make it 15 based on these responses. And when you sort of scroll through, you get a good overview of what actually exists within your corpus of documents, right? And what we also have here is when you tap into one of these answers, so let's actually look at this section over here, we generate the answer for you. So we give you the answer, but we also identify reasoning steps, right? So as I mentioned, our system is built on language model based agents. So we have different agents answering each step of the document. And it sort of says, you, says to you that, you know, the way I answered this, I took these four steps. I first identified the payment schedule. I determined the calculation method, identified payment methods, and then I outlined the penalties, right? So it's really giving that interpretability towards these models. And then you sort of have perfect citations where you sort of have these chunk level identifications of what information was used to give your answer, right? So that allows the user to have a lot of comfort saying whatever response has been generated is entirely accurate and can be used in a long-term perspective. And you can sort of export this into Excel, for example, and we've seen a lot of people take that into the next step of their workflow as well. So that covers mainly our review structure. Let's head back to generative drafting. And now you can see that this draft has been completed. We can view this draft. So what you will see in front of you is and red line mocked up document. And oh, let's, let's try that again. So yeah, you will see a red line marked up document with all the requested changes. So I requested some of these changes. I have now built out my platform to actually accept those changes. And then you can take this into Word to actually accept or reject the changes as you feel comfortable with, right? And this sort of gets you to a first draft really quickly and gets you there a lot faster than traditional methods and can be incredibly fast tool to actually get started with template and form documents. So the last thing that I would want to run into is actually our assistant's ability to read red lines. So let's quickly create a new folder. So let's say red line. Yeah. Uh, red line document. So let's create a new folder over here. And as you can see, once this folder is created, I'm going to now simply just add a new document and let's add a file. So I'm just dragging the file that we generated and I'm uploading that into our system, right? So what this now does is that our assistant mode can actually read red line changes itself. So if you have a document with a bunch of red lines generated, you have a marked up version of documents, we can sort of analyze that and give you a quick overview of what that looks like. So as we wait for the upload to process, we can sort of get back into actually looking at looking through the platform and just seeing some of the responses. And you can see that we have an upload status which tells you what the status of these documents are. And let's wait for this to upload. Yeah, so now that it has been processed, what you can essentially do is you can see that 
the document exists. And what we've also built out is a precision control system where you can dis if you're looking at 100 documents, you can decide one document. So you can use the at symbol to choose a particular document as well. So let's first select this folder over here. And then let's choose the at symbol. So let's find the collection. I can see the document inside it. Let's now choose the at symbol and say, can you, can you summarize all the changes made? And essentially what we've built out is we built out a custom parsing engine that can really understand marked up documents specifically for legal workflows, such that we can generate an in-depth summary of what has actually changed more from a user perspective, right? So sort of identifies all of the, all of the changes that we made within that term sheet itself. And you get the sort of citations, as we mentioned, you can ask follow-up questions, but this sort of just closes the loop in sort of building work product. And you can see reasoning steps as well. But that's mostly what we had over here that covers a lot of our platform. I think we've seen a lot of the benefits to actually bringing AI towards where your data resides and really connecting and building that on top of your internal systems and platforms. We as a platform are essentially LLM agnostic, such that we can use any of the language models that are most comfortable with. So mm -hmm. we've built out an agent orchestration layer that actually breaks down complex tasks into small subtasks, such that any sort of LLM can actually tackle that together, right? So if you want to use O1, you can go ahead and use O1. You have those cost mm -hmm. considerations. But for example, with some firms, there are jurisdiction restrictions where in Australia, for example, you can only use Sonnet 3. And we've been able to support that as well, just because the way we build our platform is mm -hmm. entirely plug and play in the orchestration layer over here. Right. So so you're not you're not and, prescribing which 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 LLMs they use. So so basically Oliver will work with with, with whichever. So effectively you're slotting into the LLM choices the organization already has. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we can so, connect if, into so just so so just to clarify then. So so if a law firm has absolutely no uh LLM um licenses, mm -hmm. will will VEC will yeah. Oliver still work? Yes. So in that case, we would provide one of the LLMs that we have access to, uh, and you, you can use okay. that. Gotcha. Yes. So, so, so you, you either use theirs or, or you provide them. Exactly. And we also partner with the meta team to actually do bespoke LLM deployments. So for example, if you want to do an on-prem deployment, we work with the meta team to actually support that as well. So we built out these key partnerships and looking to expand all throughout but, as well. When you say the meta team, you mean meta as in Facebook meta? Yes, Facebook Meta, correct. Right, okay, interesting. Well, uh, we, yeah. we could go on forever, but that that's very interesting, and uh, we'll have to leave it there. But uh, good luck with everything. And uh, to the viewers, if you want to know more, go to vecflow.ai and uh, or contact Rutvig directly. But thank you very much. Thank you.